So the function is given by 3x squared minus 4x minus 7. So we're trying to find the gradient. All right, so what we've got to do is we've got to differentiate 3x squared minus 4x minus 7. We get 6x minus 4 at the point x equals 2. So at x equals 2, f dash x x, or f dash 2 is 6 lots of 2 minus 4. That's 12 minus 4, which is 8. Achieve tick. Next question, the gradient at the point on the curve is given by that. So that there is the gradient function. So if we integrate 3x squared minus 4 with respect to x, we get an answer of x cubed minus 4x plus c. We get y equals x cubed minus 4x plus c. Remember that plus c. We have to solve for that c. So we know x is negative 1 and y is 2. So 2 equals negative 1 cubed minus 4 lots of negative 1 plus c. That's 2 equals negative 1 plus 4 plus c. So 2 equals 3 plus c. So therefore c is negative 1. Now that's not my answer. I want to find the equation of the curve. So the curve is y equals x cubed minus 4x minus 1. That there is an achieved tick also. So the equation of the parabola is y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 4. We're going to find the equation of the tangent. Equation of a tangent, we're going to have to use that formula there. We don't have to, but that's going to be the easiest way of using that one. And so what we need is we need our gradient. We've got y minus 1 equals m bracket x minus negative 1. We just need our gradient. So how do we find our gradient? We differentiate, and it gives us 6x minus 2. At x equals negative 1, our gradient, dy by dx, is 6 lots of negative 1 minus 2. That is negative 8. So that there now is our gradient. So chuck it over here. y minus 1 equals negative 8. x plus 1. Those two minuses there. And expand this out. And get y minus 1 equals negative 8x minus 8. So y equals negative 8x minus 7. That there got you a merit tick. Somewhere on the line you needed to calculate this gradient. That was your achieved tick. Mm -hmm. So this curve um, has a tangent and the tangent is this. So if I was to write this I could write this as 2y equals negative x minus 12 or y equals negative a half x minus Six. So this means that the gradient is negative one half. So if I'm looking at the top one, fx is that, so f dash x is my gradient. Remember that, so three halves x squared minus two. And because I've got my gradient here, negative a half equals three over two x squared minus two. And all I'm going to do is try and solve that. So add 2 to both sides and you get 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2x squared. Divide both sides by 3 over 2 and you get x squared is 1. Now if x squared is 1 then x is plus 1 or negative 1. But that's two tangents which... Oh, okay, so what we're talking about here is um, here's the graph at this point and oh no, actually not that point um, not that one at this point and this point 
there are the gradient is negative one half that's at negative one that's at one so which one of these has this equation now that's what we're going to find so how are we going to do that well when x equals one f dash one is one half times one cubed minus two lots of one minus seven that is one half minus two minus seven that is uh, negative eight and a half okay does that fit this equation when x equals one y equals negative eight and a half so one plus two lots of negative eight and a half plus twelve plus 12 equals what's that that's a negative 16 negative 17 so that's that's 1 minus 17 plus 12 that does not equal 0 so that is uh, not my uh, point at x equals negative 1 if negative one is one half of negative one cubed minus two lots of negative one minus seven that is negative a half plus two minus seven that is negative five and a half when x is negative one y is negative five and a half does that fit this equation negative one plus two lots of negative five and a half plus twelve what does that equal that equals negative one minus eleven plus twelve that equals zero that therefore that is my point so i found my point find the coordinates of the point where the tangent touches the curve. So the coordinates are negative one, negative five, and a half. Now that there is an excellence question. If you were if you were able to get that one and you discarded that, so you needed both those two t ticks to get an excellence. If you have both points found and have a gradient of uh, negative a half, that's that's all good. So if you have that and that is your merit tick and if you have found this and set it to be equal to zero there is your achieved tick okay so this one here you are trying to maximize the area of this rectangle so the area of this rectangle is going to be x times y so the area is going to be x times y you're trying to maximize the area so we need this here to be expressed in terms of x only you know y is this so the area is going to be x times 9 minus 2x squared which is the same as 9x squared no, sorry, sorry it's just 9x minus 2x cubed so the area is 9x minus 2x cubed maximum area da by dx is 9 minus 6x squared is 0. Remember, if you try and find the area, maximum area, you differentiate it, make it equal 0. So now we're just trying to solve um, this equation here. So to do that, what you can do is go 9 equals 6x squared, divide both sides by 6 and you get 3 over 2 equals x squared so therefore x is plus root 3 over 2 or minus root 3 over 2 now we're going to discard this one discard as x cannot be negative so that's what we're dealing with so far so that is going to be my x value when it's my maximum 
so the maximum area up here the area is just nine lots of x minus two lots of x cubed so the area is nine lots of root three over two minus two lots of root three over two all cubed now when i say root three over two i've written that down wrong to start with um, in green now it should be all of root three over two it should be all of root three over two apologies um so now in my calculator my calculator will give me an answer of gives me an answer of uh, 7.348 well, let's just go 7.35 uh, does it say anything about meters no not really it's just um, units squared so again another excellence question you get down to here there's your excellence you correctly find the area if you find um, this value here or the equivalent y value that is your merit tick and if you were able to form this equation here and then differentiate it to get that there there is your achieved tick the hard part there was you had to um, combine this with this to get an area function okay so this one here you need to know this is my graph if i well, that graph is almost just like a negative x squared type graph so when i differentiate that i'm going to get a negative 2x i'm getting a linear line with a gradient of negative 2. remember this part here has a gradient of 0 so i'm just bringing that down not very accurately so far but there is my gradient of 0. negative 2 i'm just going there is my there is my graph okay it's just a sketch they just wanted a sketch so you didn't get any further marks for finding the equation of the top line or what or anything like that that is just simply your achieved tip right there the next one you have to find well find the coordinates of the point where the curve find the coordinates of the point on the curve where x is 3 so you know dy by dx is this so you have to find the equations of the point so what you're going to do is you've got to anti-differentiate 2x minus 3x squared with respect to x now this gives you x squared minus x cubed plus c do not forget the plus c now it passes through the origin through the origin now this means that when x is 0 y is 0 so therefore c will be 0 so you get y equals x squared minus x cubed at x equals 3 y is 3 squared 9 minus 3 cubed 27 which is negative 18 so the coordinate of my point the coordinate is 3 negative 18 do not forget the coordinate part that's what I ask you don't forget that now that was another achieved tick next one you are given the velocity of the train you're asked to find the distance so we have to again integrate velocity with respect to time you get distance so we integrate 0.2 t plus 3 with respect to time and we get distance is 0.1 t squared plus 3 t plus c don't forget the c because at three seconds it's nine meters away so we need to solve for that c so what we do is we say at t is 3 s is 9 this means that 9 is 0 0.1 times i was going to write 9 but it's actually 3 squared which is 9 plus 3 lots of 3 again which is 9 plus c so 
that is 9 equals 0 0.9 plus 9 plus C. So C, 9 is 0, well that's 9.9 .9 plus C. So C just must be negative 0 0.9. The question asks for find the distance after 20 seconds. So at T is 20, S is 0 0.1 times 20 squared plus 3 lots of 20 minus 0 0.9. Do all that maths. I don't have uh, any room to fit that on. That gives you an answer of 99.1 meters. That there is a merit question, merit answer. If you gave me this, we gave your marker that, in particular that plus C had to be there, that got you your um, achieved tick. Okay, that. Okay, so the profit function is that. With so you've got two unknowns in this particular one. You've got a um, you've got a T and a K. So. But the profit is decreasing for that. So again, there's my graph. Okay, the profit is decreasing. In other words, the profit is decreasing after that point there. So T is 45 just there. So we know at that point there, we know at T is 45, we know that the profit function has a gradient of zero. So we've got all we need to know there to solve this. So t, sorry, p dash t is going to be negative 0.02t minus 0.75k. Okay. At t is 45, p dash 45 will be zero because it's the turning point, the decreasing after that. So 0 equals negative 0 0.02 lots of 45 minus 0 0.75k. So let's, um, what I'll do is I'll just add 0 0.75k to that, to both sides. Um, and it's going to give me 0 0.75 K, good save, equals negative 0 0.9, I think that is, that's on my head, um, 45 times 2 is 9, T, yeah, let's go to 9, excuse my mess if that's wrong, and then all we have to do now is just divide by 0 0.75, and we get an answer where K, negative 0 0.9 divided by negative 0.75, K is K T K is negative 1.2. Sorry, apologies for that T there. So that is your answer. Now, if you're able to get that with some of the stuff above, that was your excellence tip. Now that gave you seven points. If you're able to correctly correct inequality with terms of T and E. So if you're able to suggest that the gradient is actually less than zero. So in other words, you're able to say negative 0.02t minus 0.75k less than zero. Um, that was a merit tick. I've, been, I've gone down a different road to the marking schedule. The way I've got it, I struggled to really get anything but a t. Um, but that's how you did it. Um, if you correctly differentiated and made it less than zero, that was your achieved tick. Um, you know, that sounds a bit wrong. I'm not sure where you got an achieved tick from because they're saying that's also an achieved tick. So, mm. merit in terms of T and K. So, maybe they're saying for a merit, that's not a merit, maybe they're saying um, K had to be greater than negative 0.02 T over. 0.75. That was your merit.
But if you follow what I did, then that's probably the easy way of approaching that sort of question. Okay, so they're talking about a maximum velocity. So maximum velocity, we, we've got to try and differentiate the velocity function with regards to what we're talking about. So we have to find the radius for which the airflow is the gradius, the greatest, sorry, the gradius. The radius for which the airflow is the greatest. So we've got a function here, volume equals k r squared r minus r. So we've got k r squared r minus k r cubed. Now, if we are trying to find the radius, um, this is the radius of the trachea. So we're trying to find dv by dr. That's going to be 2kr minus 3kr squared. There should be another r in there. Differentiating that. Now, we know that's because we're trying to find the maximum. We know this equals 0. So 2kr minus 3kr squared equals 0. Factorize that. Common factors are k and r. 2r minus 3r. Let's use the r's. Capital R minus r. So therefore we've got an r of 0. That would be the minimum airflow. And we've got 2r capital R minus 3 little r equals 0. So we've got 2r equals 3r. We've got little r is two thirds of capital R. Now that is your justification. So if you can say R is two thirds of R capital R is max as R equals zero is minimum because there is no airflow. Or you know that this graph here is a negative cubic, so it's like that. And so that's going to be zero, and that's going to be two thirds of a positive number. So that's going to be your maximum. So you needed to be able to justify that, but you need to get something along those lines for your t. Um, if you didn't justify this, if you didn't justify it or rule out this one as your minimum, if you didn't rule that out, then there was your merit. And if you're able to get this here, that was your achieved tick. Here we have to find the coordinates where the gradient is one and a half. Well, we've got the function, so if I find the gradient function, h dash x, that's 5x minus 3 and a half. Now, the gradient, or what that just says, that's one and a half, is 5x minus 3.5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3.5 to both sides. And that way I get um, <coughs> 3 and a half plus 1 half is 5. So 5 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. And I'm going to get... Um, x equals 1. I want the coordinates, so when x equals 1, h dash 1 is 2.5 lots of 1 squared minus 3.5 lots of 1 plus 7. Um, that's 2.5 minus 3.5 plus 7, that's uh, 6. So the coordinates are 1, 6. And that is an achieved tick. Next one, the volume of the sphere changes as the radius changes. Find the rate of change of the volume. That's just saying find dv by, with respect to the radius, dr. Four thirds times three is just four pi r squared. And r is two dv by dr is 4 pi times 2 squared, that's 4 pi times 4, that's 16 
pi. Now 16 pi in your calculator gives you an answer of 50.3, roughly to one decimal place. That is again just an achieved tick. This next one's a little bit trickier. Okay, so here you've got the gradient function. The gradient function is three. So it means you've got a, <coughs> a, a gradient of three. So if I just mark there at three, not because that's at three, okay, just because if I mark there at three, I can go three, three, three. I've got a gradient of three, just like that. So um, there's part of it. Now this here has a gradient of negative one gradient of negative 1. So when I integrate negative 1, I'm, I'm going to get something like a, um, a half x squared. I'm going to get a parabola. It's a negative parabola. Okay, it's got a turning point there at 3. So I'm just going to go up here, 3. Okay, so all I'm really looking for is some sort of parabola around there. Now ideally, because this is not continuous, you probably should have some hollow circles there with some arrows going that way. But you weren't marked necessarily on that and it's not really a level two skill. So what you're marked on here was um, one of those. So one of either the linear line, so either this part, or the parabola, that part. One of those was a U tick. If you got both, there was your R tick. Okay, so here the rocket starts from rest. That's the key thing, because you've got to give them the acceleration, and you're trying to find a distance. So acceleration, we're going to need to uh, integrate to get to velocity and then integrate again to get to uh, distance or we're going to have to anti-differentiate 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 and integrate the same thing remember okay so let's go integrate acceleration which is a half t squared minus one just expanded that out and got it's a quarter minus one all right, so we're integrating that with respect to t, that's going to become our velocity. So velocity is going to be an eighth. Um, no, it's not. It's going to become a twelfth t to the power of three minus t plus c. But because it starts from rest at t equals zero. Velocity equals zero, so c will be zero. So you've got a velocity function is going to be one twelfth x cubed minus t. We still want distance, so I'm going to need to uh, integrate one twelfth t cubed minus t with respect to t. So that is going to become s is going to be one over thirty. No, one over forty-eight. Did it again. 1 over 48, t to the power of 4, minus a quarter, a half t squared, well, I can't even speak at the moment, plus c. How far does it travel in the tenth second is what you're trying to find. So this, where this starting point is really irrelevant. It can start 4 metres past, but both are going to be 4 metres past, so we're just going to ignore that. We're going to pretend that it starts from rest, so therefore at t equals zero, distance is zero, so c is zero. So in the tenth second, think about one second would be zero to one. So the first second would be zero to one. The second second would be one to two. The tenth second will be nine to ten. So at t is nine, the distance is one forty eighth times 9 to the power of 4 minus 1 half of 9 squared. That's going to give you an answer. At t is 10 
is is going to be 10 to the power of 4 minus half 10 squared so those there will give you an answer and then you just subtract them so the 9 gives you an answer of 96.1875 now the 10 is 158.3 so in the tenth second it's time 10 minus time 9 so it's the distance 10 minus the distance 9 which gives us 158.3 minus 96.175 so we're going to take that away from 96.1875 we get an answer of 62.1 meters ran into one decimal place so again good good long question if you got the correct answer there's your excellence and um, if you got one of these two i think you got a merit um, or if you had been if you'd given me that answer there that was your achieved but you had to show that that was um, zero c was zero for that one okay so we're trying to find the maximum vertical distance between these two curves so we call that y1 and y2 what we're trying to find is the maximum distance between those two maximum distance vertically so what we need to do is we need to form a, a new y equation which is going to be the top equation y1 plus 15x squared minus that's a 20 minus 20x plus 7 and we're going to subtract the second y 3x squared plus 16x minus 10 and so when we are subtracting all of that we're going to subtract the 3x squared we're going to subtract 16x but we're going to add 10x so y is going to be 4x cubed 15 minus 3 is your 12x squared 20 and 16 is minus 36x 7 and 10 add 17 now remember we're trying to find the maximum vertical distance so maximum implies dy by dx to be 0 so dy by dx is going to be 12x squared plus 24x minus 36 now that's going to equal 0 so now we've got to factorize um, factorize this here now common factor of 12 so we'll take the 12 out x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0 it's going to be 12 into x plus 3 x minus 1 equals 0 so x is either negative 3 or x is 1 but which is the max and which is the minimum so now this graph here is an equation for the vertical distance it's not an equation for this graph for this graph so this graph here but what it is it's an equation for the vertical distance so this graph looks like this so where is it at a maximum the maximum is just here that is the x is 1 x is negative 3 so we're going to have a maximum at x is negative 3 so max at x equals negative 3 is that what we're asked to find no we're asked to find the maximum vertical distance so when x equals negative 3 y equals 4 lots of negative 3 cubed plus 12 lots of negative 3 squared minus 36 lots of negative 3 plus 17 now your calculator will tell you that's 27 4 lots of 27 plus 12 lots of 9 plus 36 lots of 3 plus 17 now that should give you an answer of 125 so 
um, that there gave you an excellence tick. Um, if you were able to basically find this part here and then differentiate it and make it equal zero, that was your achieved tick. Um, if you were able to find, <coughs> if you were able to find, um, if you were able to find these, and then you then use that to uh, find the maximum, but not prove it's a max. That was your merit tick. So how else can you prove that that is a maximum? That well, that's a little extension activity where you can go. What is the second derivative? So d squared y, through dy squared over d squared x. Now, from here, that's 24x plus 24. Now, when x is negative 3, dy squared over d squared x is negative 48. When x was 1, dy squared over d squared x is 48. So because it's a negative, that implies its maximum. Now, that there is more of a level 3 skill, but if you can understand that, that's going to help you prove and therefore help you get your excellence tick.